get a feeling for what we expect the answer to be. So one question um, that we can ask is, let's suppose we have 50 people. So what are the what is the chance that none of them have the same birthday? Okay, so when doing questions about probability, oftentimes there's there's one way to view the problem. There's one question that's easy potentially to figure out and other ways that are not. So this is going to be a way that's going to be easy to figure something out. So if we already have this, the number of people that we have, say 50 people in CS151, what are the chances that none of them have the same birthday? Okay. Well, um, so each pair of people could have the same birthday. And so there's two questions. How many pairs, different pairs of the 50 people are there? And then there's another question for a particular pair. What is the chance they have the same birthday? Okay, let's take me and whoever's watching this. If you don't know my birthday, let's just suppose it's random. If my birthday is random, what is the chance that my birthday is the same as yours? If it's random, it should be 1 out of 365, or 365.25 if you're taking the leap day. Okay, so for any particular pair you can think of, if you pick the pair of people completely at random, then the chance that the second person's birthday is the same as the first is just 1 out of 365. Okay, now, how many different people, how many different ways are there to pick two people out of 50? There's a name for that in math, so that is called 50 choose 2, which is otherwise known as the binomial coefficient with 50 and 2, which we have a formula for. 50 factorial divided by 48 factorial times 2 factorial. It's not so important that you agree with that. Um, also, that simplifies to apparently 1225 but I want to put the simplification. So 50 times 49 divided by 2, which is 25. Okay, I'll leave there now. Um, so it's not so important that you see or agree that all that works, but it is, it is this value, and that is roughly... It's roughly... Um, whatever this is, this 50, I'm going to call that um, k. So it's roughly k squared over 2. So this is k, this is k minus 1, and then I divide it by 2. So it's roughly k squared over 2. Okay, so I have this many different pairs and each one of them has this chance of having a birthday match. So we can ask various questions that are easy based on this information and one of them is what is the um, expected number of pairs of people with the same birthday? And it turns out that it is exactly this 12, 25 times 1 over 365. It just works out that way, which is, okay, apparently that. And in general, it is roughly 
um, k squared over 2 over 365. So if we put in k equals uh, 20, then we'd have 20 over 2. So 20 times actually it would be 19 divided by 2 divided by 365. Okay, which is a half. So you'd, you'd have roughly a half. And you, you can plug in different values of k. Um, but this, this, um, this behavior that we're seeing kind of agrees that normally once you get up to once you get up to 50, then you're on average going to have three different pairs that have the same. And if we put in, let's see, it's normally bigger than, say, 15. So if k equals 15, then we have 15 times 14 divided by 2 divided by 365. And so you have, the smaller this gets, it's just not likely that you have any pairs that are the same. There's other ways to analyze this, but this is one way that's kind of cool. Um, so overall, your expected uh, number of pairs that are the same is roughly k squared over 2 divided by n. Right, n is the number of things. So once this k, so once k gets to be about square root of 2n, then there's a pretty good chance. So we could do that with our different values of n of taking instead of looking at Instead of looking 1 to 365, you could do 1 to 50, 1 to 10, and then use the same kind of analysis to see once you get up to this, this roughly this neighborhood, then you have a pretty good chance. Okay, so that's it for the birthday problem. It is, it is a classic um, beginning problem in math, and... The math is not super difficult, and it is kind of interesting. But then also, we can run experiments without even knowing what the math, how the math is supposed to work out. So that's why, right, why do we care about this one? It's a math problem, and we can run simulations. The simulation... Should give a similar answer as the math, and that's not always doesn't always work out that way. That you could run the simulation and you get a different answer than you expect, and then you have to check the math, you have to check the simulation and the math. Okay, and you can maybe do this, um, use this same idea of you have some probability questions.